This is part two of a series of videos about parametric curves. Um, I'm aiming this ser series of videos at students who are in pre-calculus through multivariable calculus or calculus three. Physics students will get a lot of out of these videos as well. I'm teaching both the math and Mathematica, which is this program that I'm using. I hope that even if you don't have Mathematica, even if you don't want to use Mathematica, that you'll still get some things out of this. Mathematica is a pretty nice tool to illustrate ideas in math. And so I, I hope you would still consider continuing to watch these even if you don't have Mathematica or access to Mathematica. Generally speaking, I'm following some of the notation and ideas of the second edition of Multivariable Calculus by John Rogowski. In the first video, well actually video zero, I called it, I motive, tried to motivate why study parametric equations and parametric curves and the reasons that I gave that were that because they were beautiful and useful. And in the first part, the second video actually, I considered a foundational example modeling straight line motion at a constant speed. We want to use parametric equations to model the motion of a person starting at the point 2, negative 1 and traveling to the point negative 1, 3 in one second and you can imagine the distance units to be whatever you want. Typically meters would be the most popular thing to use. In that first uh, part, second video, first part, I used a Mathematica command called listplot to plot three points that illustrated the motion that we were thinking about in that example. In this video I want to use functions, honest to goodness regular functions from math, linear functions in fact, to try to model this, this motion in a little bit more detail. We're also going to introduce a new Mathematica command called table to help us do this. Let me also point out that in the, I think it was the introductory video, I showed you how that if you have an extra line over here and a triangle down there, that means there's material that's hidden and can be opened by double clicking on that. And that's the material that's hidden. I can double click to close it as well. But also in Mathematica 9, which is what I'm using now, the latest version in 2013 here, you can click on one of these triangles in a usual kind of way to open up what's hidden. So that's probably an, an easier way for you to think about um, opening that up. Anyway, so here was, this, here was the coordinate system to illustrate this motion. We started at the point 2, negative 1 when time was 0. We end at the point negative 1, 3 when time is 1. Since this motion was along a straight line at a constant speed, we know we'd be halfway between these points along the line segment between them, at the midpoint of that line segment, at time equals 1 half, 0 0.5. Based on the fact that x went down by 3, the change in x was negative 3, as time went from 0 to 1, we would know that x would change by uh, negative 1 and a half as time goes from 0 to 1 half. So the x-coordinate of this point is 0 0.5. And the y-coordinate goes from negative 1 up to 3. It increases by 4. So over half a unit of time, it would increase by 2 from negative 1 up to positive 1. So we plotted this point, too. I'd like to plot more points now. Instead of every half second, say every tenth of a second. I'm going to use functions, mathematical functions, to do this. Here's the way I typically enter my functions, my mathematical functions, and in fact in this case a linear function in Mathematica. First of all you've got the function name, f. That's a common name to use for a function. Next you've got the independent variable, a t I'm using. t is going to represent time. Time is going to start at time 0 and go up to time 1. This underscore here is necessary to use when you are defining a function for the first time. But once you've defined the function, you don't, don't need to use an underscore anymore. And then like all uh, functions in Mathematica, we need to use square brackets around the input uh, instead of parentheses, like you would do when you write it out by hand. Notice I also have a colon equals here. The colon is actually optional, but I, as a general rule, like to use it here when I'm defining a function. It's called a set delayed operator. Don't worry about what that means. What is this function going to represent? I want this function to represent the x-coordinate, the first coordinate of the person walking. So, as a function of time. So when time is 0, the starting value of x is going to be 2. 
And when time is 1, the ending value of x is going to be negative 1. I want this to be, in fact, a linear function whose output at time 0 is 2 and whose output at time 1 is, is negative 1. I would encourage you to stop the video here, pause it, and see if you can figure out the formula for this function. Uh, if you're back, or if you never paused it, I will now write it out. Think about this. The rate of change of x with respect to time is negative 3. So that's going to get multiplied by the independent variable. Why negative 3? Because x goes down from 2 to negative 1, down by 3. Its change is negative 3 in one unit of time. Its starting value is 2, so if I do a plus 2 here, this is going to have the right value. f of 0 is going to be 2. f of 1 is going to be negative 1. This is going to give you the x-coordinate of the function of time. What about the y-coordinate? I'll call that a function g. g is going to represent the y-coordinate. Its starting value is negative 1, and its rate of change of y with respect to t is going to be 4. So this function, g of t equals 4t minus 1, is going to work there g of 0 will be negative 1, g of 1 will be positive 3, and this has a constant rate of change of 4. You're moving at a constant speed. These have to be a linear function. A constant speed along a straight line is going to have linear functions for both the x and y coordinates. These essentially are parametric equations, a system of parametric equations. t is the parameter, so to speak, and I'll talk more about that as we go on. In order to plot this, uh, in order to make a list of points uh, showing where the person is every tenth of a second, now I could try to figure it out by hand and type it all in, but it's going to be more efficient for us to use something called the table command in Mathematica. This is a function that's going to take some input and give you an output. And um, the output is going to give you is going to be a list. What we want it to do is we want it to give us an output that looks kind of like this except longer. Instead of three points, it's actually going to be 11 points. Uh, it's going to be a list of lists, a list of points, you might say, when you use them in the list plot. What will these points look like? They will be points that have coordinates, a first coordinate, comma, a second coordinate. Remember that f gives you the first coordinates. So I'm going to use f to find first coordinates and g to find second coordinates. g gives you second coordinates. f is x coordinates, g is y coordinates. I need an iterator in table. Typical letter to use here might be the letter lower, lowercase n. By the way, you don't want to use a capital N in these cases because capital N has a special meaning in Mathematica. n is going to start at 0 and go up to 10. The default in table is that your iterator goes up by one unit each time. So it's going to start at 0, then it's going to go up to 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, etc. And, but I want the inputs into these functions to go up by 0.1 instead of 1. So I can take 0.1 times n as a way of doing that. Now, when n is 0, the inputs of these functions are going to be 0. When n is 1, the inputs are going to be 0.1. When n is 2, the inputs are going to be 0.2. When n is 3, the inputs are going to be 0.3, etc. When n is 10, 10 times 0.1 is 1. The inputs to these functions are going to be the time 1. This will generate, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, a list of lists, a list of points in this case, is this case, 11 points in fact. There's the first point, 2, negative 1, that's the output of that I get when I plug in n equals 0. And it does match our first point down here, 2, negative 1. When n is um, 10, that's the last point, right here, negative 1, 3, which is the ending point for the motion. Uh, when n is 5, that's at the halfway point. When you plug in n equals 5, 0.1 times 5 is 0.5. 0 0.5 is the time that gives you this point. So this is giving us the points that we're at at every tenth of a second. Now what I can do, I could give this thing a name and just plug it in down here, but I'm just going to copy and paste the entire table command right there. I'm embedding one command in another. Table is going to get evaluated first. I pasted it there. It's going to generate this list, and then list plot will plot that list. Here we go. There are those ten, uh, 11 points starting at time 0 when you're here and going up in increments of time of 0.1 each time to get down to get up here when time is 1. 
this is not the ideal way actually of plotting this parametric curve. There's another command I'm going to show you uh, called parametric plot. That is a more ideal way of plotting this, but hopefully this is a better way of gaining some initial understanding of what's going on here.